in Saddam Hussein, for Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Read about it. Read about the WedTech scandal, and you'll find out that this corruption has run through our political system for a very long period of time, which is why they hate Donald Trump, incidentally. Do you understand how it all leads back to him? He has no donors. He is not beholden to any of them. Is he perfect? No. Will he be a perfect this or a perfect that? No. But they don't own him, and they don't know what's going to happen. And the gravy train will end, because they don't know who to go to to get to him. That's what's freaking them out. They don't know which lobbyist to pay off to reach Donald Trump now or then. And they're panicking, because they may have to work for a living. Now you understand the rest of the story. Back in a minute. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. And that comes from no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. As well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Great poet John Donne no longer taught universities and said they teach, I guess, 50 cents lyrics about rape, murder, kidnapping, beating people up. And this is the beauty of European literature. Read it. John Donne, No Man is an Island. Beautiful literature. It's what made the whole West. It's what created the cathedrals. It's what created the electricity, the ampere vault, everything you name, all of our inventions that are of any value, all came from these people who are now despised by the rabble. You want to call the rabble the have-nots, you'd be wrong, because many of them have many, many billions of dollars. But they're using the rabble to bring down the last vestiges of Western civilization, now assaulting Western civilization with an invasion unseen in human history, an invasion occurring without a shot being fired. An invasion which in the past would have required a nation losing in battle to permit millions of foreign men to enter the country and have their way with the nation. It's never happened before. It's happening right in front of your eyes. And if you think that the end is going to be good for you, you're very mistaken. It'll be very bad for you. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. I could say if a woman is raped on New Year's Eve in Germany, all women were raped in New Year's Eve on Germany. But then it would be too much for the average liberal to understand. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. And so I talk and I bleed for those who are being decimated on a daily basis, the Christians who are being driven out of the Middle East while the UN does nothing but collect their their pay and collect whatever greedy little things they can on the side. UN is useless, worthless, nothing. What's the UN army for? Why has it not been sent in to rescue the Yazidi girls? Why has it not been sent in to protect the Syrians in, in a protected compound or enclave so they don't have to come to Europe and the rest of the world? The UN is as corrupt as, as the Republican and Democrat parties are, and that's why they're not challenged. Any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for the D-O-N-N-E, -N -E, John, used to be taught in universities. I guess now because he's a white male and European at that, I guess his poetry was no good. This is the Savage Nation. You can tell it's in a little different place today. But it's really the place I'm usually in when I'm not on the air. This is where I am. This is who I am. You want more of it? Listen. You don't want more of it? Don't listen. But I'm going to be me. It's all I can be. Thanks for listening. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. What a genius Jimi Hendrix was. I mean, look what he can do with an electric guitar. He captured the entire mood of America at that time, the disharmonics uh, are just what we're hearing now. A disharmonic American national anthem. No man is an island. 6,000 flights are shut down because of the snowstorm, the blizzard. Dallas. I'm sorry, Dulles. New York City. South Carolina to Kansas. New York to South Carolina to Kansas. 85 million people, more than a quarter of the U.S. population is being affected by the snowstorm. And so even if we're sitting here in a non-snowy area, we are affected by it. It really goes to the issue of no man is an island entire of itself, when you think about it. So we hear the Yazidi girls screaming as they're being raped by the ISIS Muslims who say it's okay, according to the Quran, to rape. You should hear their screams. Or if an elephant in Africa is shot by... Uh, a gunship, killed by a gunship flying overhead from some corrupt ivory hunter selling it to some piece of garbage in China to put on his mantle to show what a great bourgeois he's become. You should hear the elephant scream. You should hear the little baby elephant running in fear as his father elephant is killed and he doesn't know what to do to live. You should hear it all. But I don't think you can. No man is an island entire of itself. We're all part of the same. And in this interconnected world that we keep hearing about through the Internet, we're all part of the main. And any man's death should diminish you because you're involved in mankind. And as John Donne wrote, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say to you. This little interconnected world of ours, and you're blind, deaf, and dumb to what's being done on the planet to innocent people, because your president won't talk about Islamo-fascism, it doesn't exist. Because John Kerry gives $75 billion to the terrorist nation of Iran, which still wants to wipe Israel off the map. You don't care. You should care. Why? Because no man is an island. It is affecting you. Oh, it's affecting you for sure. Take a look at San Bernardino. Oh, I know you're not from San Bernardino, but you should care about San Bernardino because tomorrow it could be Berkeley. Tomorrow, one of those fanatics, could, God forbid, could blow up a supermarket in San Francisco. He won't know whether you're a good progressive who loved Muslims or fanatics. or He doesn't care. They're killing Muslims themselves who are not pure enough for them. Oh, you should care very, very much, and you should care only about national security. It's the number one issue. Put aside all of your left-wing agendas for a moment. For God's sakes, get off the 1960s already. Stop with the homophobia. Understand that no man is an island and that one bomb can ruin your day whether you're a progressive, gay, straight, doesn't matter and that the only thing that should matter to all of us is who's going to be toughest in crushing ISIS before they crush us through a thousand slashes oh, they are an existential threat to us they get their hands on a dirty nuke you'll find out just what I'm saying to you and here we have a Department of Homeland Security stooge, Jay Johnson still has his job after San Bernardino only in a corrupt administration. But as I said in the last hour, the corruption doesn't run on one side only. Both wings are dirty. Left wing and right wing are filthy. The feathers on both wings are so dirty from the sludge of the sewer that the bird can't fly anymore. And that's what I've been trying to say to you. And I don't know if I got through to you. I really don't. But I've, can't, I've come to a new conclusion in my life, in my professional life. So be it. I can't sit here asking myself every second, you know, do they understand what I'm saying? Well, at least some do, but most don't. Most don't. They're either cheeseheads or knockwurst heads. I've listened to radio for 20 years, and I know most people who call talk radio want to root for a team. They want to root as a cheesehead or as a knockwurst head. They want to sit in the stadium, sit in the snow, and cheer for their team. That's all they're capable of doing. Knockwursts, go, go, go. Cheeseheads, go, go, go. They have no use for anyone who's trying to be subtle or explain the bigger picture to them. It's just not here. It's not in this ether. But nevertheless, that's where I am. That's where I live. That's who I am. That's how I am. And we'll see how you are. 
So uh, let's take the callers, because we're still on in the East Coast, believe it or not. They haven't closed us off in New York because of the blizzard yet. They haven't shut us down on WMAL in Washington yet. And all the other stations that I have, the wonderful stations East and West, are open for business at 855-407-282. If you're home alone, or rather home in the in the snowstorm that is or soon will be, and you have very little to do, I guarantee you the audience is larger for radio today than normal. And maybe they're not used to this tone. Maybe I sound different, but it's really me. I get into these moods once in a while, but nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> I have to take the callers is what I have to do right now. So let's go to WABC. Dave, go ahead. What's on your mind? Did you hear what I said in hour one? How did it affect you? It affected me. It was like a spiritual awakening. Let me tell you, Dr. Savage, I thought I was a Republican until I heard you speak today. And you were absolutely right. Both of their cult, they, they are a cult. Republicans are a cult. Democrats are a cult. And you hit the nail right on the head today better than I've ever heard anybody ever put it. And I will forever be listening to you. And whatever book you have out there, I'm going on Amazon today to buy it. Because I I'm, think not, I'm not here to sell you a book. I'm here to sell you the idea that we have a corrupt political system and that if you were a cheesehead before or a knockwurst head before, I hope you understand that you were just being used as a, as a shill for corrupt politicians and a corrupt party on either side. And to sit here pointing fingers at Obama, great. Yeah, he's done a lot of damage, but you think the other side is clean? No, they're not clean. And I took you all the way back to the Reagan administration, who many people think was God himself, but he wasn't. And I talked about the attorney general under him. I'll bet you never heard any of that. I have not. No, it's the first time. And that's why I'm saying it was like a spiritual awakening listening to you today. I, I, now, you know why, now you know why Donald Trump is being attacked by the Republican Party, the National Review, and Jane Fonda. Isn't it odd how politics makes such strange bedfellows that Jane Fonda, who's on a tear with her Hollywood leftists against Donald Trump, has now been joined by Thomas Sowell, Rich Lowry, John Fund, Brent Bazell, Glenn Beck, Edwin Meese, Dana Loesch, Cal Thomas, William Crystal, John Potthuritz, and others you never heard of. Isn't it interesting why they all hate him? That's what it is. And you are 100% correct. I'm telling okay. you, I never heard of it. Well, all right, well, all right. I'm trying to tell you something here, and I don't know how many people get it yet. They still want to put on the hat, the cheese hat, and sit in the snow cheering for the cheese team. Well, let me send you a free copy of Government Zero. Since you were going to go buy it, you may as well have it. 855-407-282. We have great callers now, interesting callers. And I've asked people if they were hippies who became, I, not conservatives so much, former hippies who became something else other than diehard hippies to call the show. I, I really wanted to hear from you, and I have some good ones. Let's go to Ellen, WNVU Radio in North Carolina. Ellen, define what you are and what you are. I am uh, currently libertarian, a 60-year-old hippie. <laughs> I like it. That means you moved from New York and you're living in North Carolina, right? I'm from New York originally. And, uh, yeah, I was flipped over because uh, in the 90s, uh, an older lady friend gave me a copy of Bastiat's The Law. That little 50-page book flipped me right over. Now, but where are you today as a former hippie lady? Uh, I am fiscally conservative and I am socially liberal. Okay, what does socially liberal mean? Explain what, what the bullet points are for that. Uh, Pro-abortion, pro-women's rights, pro-freedom. I am a, a, a small government. So, but I'm okay, good. Okay, I'm listening carefully. If you could vote today, of all the candidates, both sides, who would you vote for? I love Rand, but I'm going for Trump. Bingo. That's what I've been trying to say. So many people on both sides who are independent are going for Trump, which is why he's being attacked by Jane Fonda and the National Review and the entire Republican establishment, for that matter. Well, of course, because they're attacking him because he's, uh, he's made money. He's a self-made man, primarily. And, I was and they, can't, they can't buy him. They can't buy access to him. Not exactly. He's an honest man. So I mean, have you been I, hit by, has, has the snow hit in North Carolina yet? Pardon me? Have you had the snow hit yet? No, sir. I think we're just going to get rain here in eastern North Carolina, about two inches. Yeah. So what? what is life like for a former New York hippie, um, socialist, liberal, flower child, patchouli oil wearing, 
Woodstock 